Hey guys, um, I can't believe I'm making this video. A quick trigger warning, this video is gonna heavily touch on the topic of rape. It does go into a bit of detail of the night of my rape. And so if that is triggering to you in any way, please click out of this video. It is not worth it. If you haven't kept up with the things that have happened after my video in 2019, let me just give you a brief summary. I have never collabed with Jesse's rapist. If you ask me to collab, I'm not gonna tell you to fuck off because you blackmailed me. I've never, ever publicly defended Jesse's rapist. In fact, one time I was at an event, an influencer event, and he happened to be there and he tried to take a Snapchat selfie with me and I told him to delete it right now because I did not want to be associated with him. I have zero association with Curtis Laporte. I think I only saw him like two or three times. One was at an event in Hollywood. That's where he was like, hey Gabby Show, can I get a pic? And took those pictures. And then afterwards, the same night, Everybody from the event went to the diner across the street, and then he was taking pictures of Zayn and I, like implying that he was there with us. And all the responses are, you know, this girl is a rape apologist and she defended, uh, she left her best friend for her best friend's rapist videos that say, I am a rape apologist. Which is not true. People really think I'm a rape apologist. Literal disprovable slander. I also listen to Curtis because he's a human being. And just like in real court, in the court of public opinion, if you're gonna judge and condemn somebody, you should at least hear them out. Jesse was looking for any moment that she possibly could so that she could get emotional on the call because she was filming it and she always knew she was going to post it. I want a public apology that that should never have been made public. That's not gonna happen, so I, I understand. Okay, so then we keep going. I'm not doing anything with you. Like, I'm not. Like, this is not, you well, say I'm we saying, keep going. I'm keep going then. I have publicly apologized for a situation that should have been private. So I mm -hmm. think that it's only fair that you can also extend that same courtesy to me considering what I've been through. This isn't me trying to like hurt you or threaten you in any way. Like this is not do this or it's gonna happen. Like, I mean, I guess it kind of is, <laughs> but it's just like, I'm not doing it to hurt you. The clips of the phone call that you heard are from a Twitter thread that I posted a couple weeks ago, and we're gonna get into why I posted it in this video. After that phone call took place, Gabby texted me with a list of demands that she had, and if I didn't agree to those demands, she was gonna continue talking about our past in the way that she was doing it, which was extremely vile. You are narcissistic abusers. And you have been for six fucking years, Jesse Smiles. So Literally, right now, I'm like, months. can I say that? Yes, I can fucking say you that. Can say you guys have no fucking idea what I've been dealing with behind the scenes for six years. And have I ever said a word? Have I ever tried to start drama with somebody? I was being called a rape apologist and saying I defended my best friend's rapist and ditched my best friend for her rapist. I want the false accusations removed. And I want you to publicly retract them. And I want you to apologize. It was a very, very bizarre summer last summer and now this summer as well. I swear next summer is gonna roll around and I'm just gonna be hiding in a closet. Like I can't with summer anymore. She gave me 48 hours to talk to lawyers and decide what I was gonna do. And ultimately I think I came up with a really reasonable compromise. And I did that because I don't wanna fucking do this. I made it very clear on the phone call. I made it very clear on text. I don't wanna continue doing this. So anything that I felt I could do, I was gonna do, which included an NDA that I said I would sign if she signed one as well. I didn't think it was fair for just me to have to sign one. She was refusing to sign one because she said she had to talk about the situation in interviews. If we both sign NDAs, I'll do it and we'll never speak about each other but on the Jenny, internet again. I also have to, if somebody brings this up in an interview. No. And I told her I would apologize to her, but I would not say that I lied in my video because she wanted me to say that. I do not have a problem with both of us taking our videos down. That for sure, I think is a possibility that we can both come to. What I would be looking for is, I should have never posted that video. I said some untrue shit, some true shit. And I told her I would take down my videos because I never meant to hurt her. I thought that was a very reasonable compromise to be completely honest and I still think it was. Gabby told me that she had some meetings and she would get back to me. And the next I heard from her was when I got a phone call one night. My sister-in-law was in the hospital and I was cooking her dinner because I'm not gonna get into what she went through. That is her situation, but it was sad. And so I cooked her dinner because I don't know what the fuck to do. So I just started cooking her dinner because I wanted her to eat well when she got back from the hospital. And Gabby called me. My husband looked at me and said, do not answer the fucking phone. And I answered the phone, of course. And Gabby started screaming at me. She told me that my friend Jen Dent was tweeting and that if I didn't get her to stop tweeting, that she had two podcasts 
that she had filmed, filled with our past, filled with emails from our past, and she was ready to release them. And I told her, Gabby, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. That's literally what I said. I was like, I'm not on Twitter. My sister-in-law's in the fucking hospital. Can you leave me alone? And she told me that she was sorry to hear that, but that we all have a lot of horrible shit going on and that I needed to get my friend to stop tweeting or else she was going to release the podcast. And I ended up hanging up on her and she did send me a text message before I could even text Jen to ask her what Gabby was talking about. And she reiterated that we all have terrible shit going on, but that I needed to get Jen to stop tweeting. What she was referring to is that last summer, Gabby Hanna and her fans perpetuated a rumor that Jen Dent had raped a little girl. A random guy from Australia decided to start tweeting Jen that she raped a little girl. And Jen was literally like, what the fuck are you talking about? But Gabby Hanna fans, because they hate Jen a lot, they decided to spread that rumor like wildfire. Gabby ended up addressing this in her Patreon, saying that she was aware of the allegations against Jen Dent, but everyone stay away from these people because they're very dangerous. And I just need to say this right now. There is no little girl. There is no victim that has come forward. It is a dude from Australia that when he was pressed for evidence, literally started trolling people and being like, oh, pee pee poo poo. Like literally, this is the most ridiculous shit I've ever seen on Twitter. So although I always believe all victims, there is no victim. So Jen was upset about that. That's why she was tweeting because Gabby's fans tried to get Jen fired. Jen is a nurse and they contacted Jen's old nursing job and tried to tell them, about her rape allegations. So yeah, I would be fucking pissed too if a bunch of Gabby fans accused me of raping someone. What on earth? So long story short, I was telling her like, your fans called her a rapist today. Like, what do you want me to do? I, I'm literally just try to cook fucking dinner. And I did talk to Jen and I asked her to stop tweeting and she got upset because who is Gabby to demand through me that Jen stops tweeting? Jen's a grown ass woman who has plenty of issues with Gabby on their own. So for her to use me as a messenger and then use my past and my trauma against me to get Jen to stop doing what she wants Jen to stop doing is just completely sick. I basically begged her to please leave me alone and she finally did. So I sent her a pretty long text message that was relaying how uncomfortable it made me feel that she was trying to manipulate me to do things that she wanted by holding our past over my head. I thought that that was fucking awful and that also I was really disturbed with the information that I had found out about Curtis and about her relationship to him. And I wanted to be concise with my thoughts and honest and just try to get my point across as best I can. And Gabby didn't even read the message. She's like, oh, that's a novel. Like, <laughs> my God. And then Gabby got to the point where she said, well, we need to just speak through our lawyers. We can't talk to each other anymore. And I just put LOL, okay. And then Gabby did what Gabby does best. And she searched her mind for the most heinous shit she could tell me. And that was Dude, Jen raped a little girl though. And I literally was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And she's like, oh, have you seen the evidence? It's dark. There are multiple times that Gabby has just racked her brain for like, what would piss Jesse off the most right now? And then she goes with that. That was one of those scenarios. So that's literally the last time I ever spoke to Gabby Hanna. Although she didn't stop talking about me. However, most recently, the thing that has brought me to this point is that Gabby is doing a series. But not only is she doing a series, she posted a video that apparently isn't part of it that has to do with me and has to do with my rape. And I have repeatedly asked this woman to stop, to stop talking about my rape, to stop talking about my trauma, to please leave this out of her narrative of whatever the fuck she wants to talk about with me. Talk about anything you want. Stop talking about that. But this video was so much worse than I ever thought that it could be. I'm going to react to her video and I'm going to show proof that I have. I don't hoard text messages from 2015. Actually, I have my text messages set to delete every year because I want storage on my phone and who needs text messages from over a year ago? Apparently Gabby. But I'm going to show emails. I'm going to talk about situations that she has blackmailed me with because that is what she did. She did blackmail me. I understand a lot of people think that I shouldn't talk about this. I saw a lot of tweets of people being like, Jesse, just ignore this person because if there's anything Gabby's trying to do with her series, it's get attention in any way, shape or form. Negative, positive, she does not care. And I understand that me doing this video is possibly giving her what she wants. I don't know for sure. Gabby has used every opportunity that she's ever talked about me to lie in a really, really hurtful way. And so now that she says she has two episodes of her series dedicated to me, it's very hard for me to just sit back and be like, it's okay, I'll just see what she says. I don't wanna see what she says. I wanna post this video, know that my truth 
truth is out there and the truth is out there and then not even watch her series. That's what I want. I'm not going to watch those episodes on me. I don't want to know what she says about me because this, what we're going to talk about in this video is everything for me. If she wants to find tweets or something where I wasn't very nice to her in 2016, that's on her. She can do that. I want the truth out there and I want to be the one to deliver my truth. Gabby Hanna has, against my will, delivered my truth one too many times and part of my French, but she's fucked it up every time. So if Gabby feels like she can talk about my trauma, she can bring it up. She can talk about the night I was raped when that has literally nothing to do with this. If she has the right to do that, then I feel like I have the right to be sitting here and talking about what really happened. If at all possible, please watch through the entire video because if anything, the end and where Gabby talks about the night I was raped is some of the most sickening shit that I really hope people are made aware of because what she's doing on this platform is dangerous and there's no other word to say it. What she has done and what she's continuously being allowed to do to not just myself, but many others is dangerous. And she is a dangerous person to have a platform with the way she distributes information and the way she doesn't think about the things that she's putting out there for her followers and the people watching that to process. They don't need to process your shit, Gabby. You need to process your shit, just like I need to process my shit so that when we come to the internet to talk about something, we are not unleashing every thought in our brain for someone else to be subjected to. That's not a responsible thing to do with a platform. Be honest, speak your truth, but what you're putting people through with this series is sick, in my opinion. Anyway, um, this is very long, so let's just get into reacting to Gabby's video about me. So this video is not one that was meant to be in the series, but so much has happened since I finished the series and everybody just wants me to address the Jesse Smiles leaked phone call. I decided instead of trying to fit more information into the videos I already edited to just kind of sit down and preface it with this because it doesn't really come into conversation until the end of part two. I actually predicted that Jesse was going to leak this phone call in part two of her chapter. So I actually did address the phone call in the series and that's why I didn't want to address it again beforehand because it was already addressed. I was able to predict what she was going to do because she's predictable. I have to be honest, I genuinely don't understand this statement at all. Gabby started creating this series in March. She started filming this series in March. Do you know what I was doing in March? Definitely not talking about Gabby Hanna. March is actually the month I found out I was pregnant. Me and my family went on vacation to a cabin here in Georgia. It was awesome. I was just uh, enjoying my life and definitely not thinking or talking about Gabby. So I failed to see how a series that she started filming in March, which now she's admitted I have two parts in, so two whole videos dedicated to me, how I'm the predictable one. If by predictable, you mean that you knew once I saw your series videos on me, which God knows what they're gonna say in them, that I would feel upset and use a phone call that proves that you lied about the relationship that you had to the man that raped me, then yes, I guess it's predictable that I would want to defend myself in a situation where you were going to release information that either wasn't true or that triggered me. She's been targeting and attacking me online since 2015. I've learned her patterns when I had to collect evidence for the lawsuit and it was just very obvious that this, this was her next move. What Gabby doesn't understand is that every single time I have ever spoken about Gabby, whether I said her name in a video or I did not say her name in a video, it is because she did something that a upset me. I have never in my life just gone around saying things about Gabby that never happened or making things up in the way that she's done to me. I just don't understand why she's making it seem like this is something I love to do when the only time I've ever addressed Gabby or gotten in fights with Gabby was because of things that she did. And I don't think she genuinely remembers it that way because when she's talking like this, I'm like, do you think I just do things out of the blue? Like I just wake up one morning and just want to pick a fight with you. Everything I've ever done is because you provoked it, whether in private or in public. I leaked those phone calls for a very specific reason, Gabby, and that's because you have been talking about me consistently for the last year publicly. After last summer, when you completely annihilated me online, when I was not even retaliating for 99% of it, I just learned to drop it. Like I didn't want to deal with you anymore. And then you make a video on my son's birthday where you're talking about all the people that have wronged you. And you say stories about me because you talk about the person you used to live with, which is me. And you're just saying all these insane allegations and everybody's going over to my Instagram page on my son's birthday and being like, oh, you're such a horrible mother. I feel horrible for your children. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on. And then fast forward to when you go on drama alert and you're talking to Keemstar, a man who has repeatedly not just told me I wasn't raped, he has literally joked about my rape and on multiple occasions just says, oh, it's very hard to believe because they were dating, which we weren't, but it shouldn't matter. This man has harassed me online for years. Gabby knows this. He is an infamous misogynist and rape apologist and overall horrible human being. And Gabby goes on his show to talk about me and Trisha Paytas to promote a song she wrote for Trisha Paytas that Trisha Paytas didn't even want her to write. And I ignored that. I just 
just said, fuck it, whatever, shitty thing to do, I'm gonna keep it pushing. But when a BuzzFeed reporter just last month reaches out to me and says, hey, I had an interview with Gabby and she spoke a lot about you. Would you be willing to answer questions? And for you in that article to say, oh, I think it's a little chaotic that I haven't gotten apologies from people like Jesse Smiles, when you know that you were on a phone call with me a year ago threatening me that if I didn't do what you wanted, which includes apologizing to you publicly, you were gonna talk about our past publicly in an effort to hurt me. So when I hear you talk about me apologizing to you and how you feel it's a little chaotic that I haven't apologized to you, or when I read that you were never friends with Curtis and that you always sided with me, you just always believed me, and people just start rumors about you, about the Curtis situation every time you're releasing music, which is something you've said I've done for a long time now. And I'm promoting my project like crazy and you're gonna put my name in your fucking thumbnail bringing up a fucking dramatic lie a hate campaign that you fucking started five months you don't post but i'm posting a project and you have to say did gabby apologize yeah it pissed me off gabby because you're still lying i'm gonna move on now but i just find it ridiculous that she acts like she's some sort of genius for seeing into the future and knowing that i was gonna use this phone call gabby when you push people and push people and push people and then proceed to dedicate two episodes to them in a series yeah they just might defend themselves you're not a genius for figuring out that i was gonna use that phone call in which you admit that you've been lying for the last year to defend myself. Jesse showed seven to 10 minutes, I believe, of a three, over three hour phone call that she quite literally threatened me into having, obviously, because it was an over three hour phone call. It was very heavily edited and uh, rearranged. I know that she said that it was only edited for brevity and that it didn't change the context, which I think would be really impossible to do out of a three hour phone call. And also I don't believe that she edited it for brevity because she left in a lot of her crying. I think that she edited it to evoke an emotional response because she's talking about something that is very emotional. I have to say, um, that's insulting. Gabby, at the very least. I'm not sure if Gabby understands what editing something down for brevity means, but everything I included was completely in context. We would talk about the tweets, for instance, her tweets defending Curtis, and then she would deflect. If you've heard the phone call by now, you know, she would deflect and be like, well, we need to move on to something else. And then like an hour later, we'd talk again about the tweets. And for brevity, AKA shortness of time, I had to put all the parts where we were talking about our tweets and you were addressing them together. What would have been taking it out of context would have been taking a part of the phone call where you weren't talking about the tweets and then inserting it next to the parts where you're talking about the tweets. That did not happen. And about the crying thing, Gabby, I find it interesting that Gabby views me leaving in the part of me crying as me trying to invoke an emotional response. I'm not even sure who thinks like that. When people are emotional, do you think that they're just trying to manipulate people? She thought the same thing about my 2019 video that I'm trying to manipulate with my emotions. And I just don't know why she thinks of people that way, why she thinks of human beings that way. When I see a human being being vulnerable and crying, I empathize with them. I understand they're hurting. I don't know why she sees it as some sort of manipulation tactic when it's just what it was. Like I was just crying because I was hurt. I was having a panic attack. It had to do with the situation involving Curtis, which is why it was left in. That phone call did not see the light of day until a year later when I just felt so frustrated and pushed in a corner. So I'm just going to drop the full phone call below. I have absolutely nothing to hide. And I'm so confident in that, that I didn't even listen to it back. I sent it to my editor and I told him to only censor names. And I asked him to remove one particular story that I just, it's my story and it's traumatizing and humiliating and I did not want it in the public eye. I fully respect that Gabby does not want a part of the phone call where she was speaking about something traumatic to be public. I would never speak on someone's trauma, especially when they don't want me to. I just find it really fucking ironic that less than 20 minutes later, she's gonna be talking in detail about my rapist and about the night I was raped and talking about consent revolving my rape, the one I've asked you to stop talking about repeatedly. So I tell the story, the edit picks up directly after that. You'll also hear me apologize to Jesse Smiles very many times in the phone call. Spoiler alert, if you've heard the three hour phone call, you will not hear her apologizing to Jesse Smiles very many times. The times that she apologized to me, I had to give her a lecture on how Dr. Phil says that any apology with the word but after it is not an apology at all because those were the only things that resembled an apology that she gave me. Everything was my fault. I needed to apologize to her for everything. That is the phone call. I'm not saying I was perfect. I don't like how I handled myself. I lost my cool at certain parts, but don't you dare say that you apologize to me very many times. 
it did not happen. You'll also hear Jesse say that I apologized to her, to her face about the tweets from the day the article dropped. You apologized two months later in March 2014 to me at the New York Vine meetup, but I'm sorry about those tweets, that was wrong. And that's when and how we became friends and met actually. That was used as evidence by Jesse and her friends that I did actually defend my best friend's rapist the day that the article dropped, which is a very manipulative thing to say because I had never met her. I never met Curtis. I was barely a creator at the time. I was still working my marketing job. Yes, Gabby, you apologized for making tweets that were supporting my rapist and calling me a liar and being disgusting on the day that the TMZ article was dropped. We did not know each other at the time she made those tweets. And then we met a couple months later at a Vine meetup in New York. She came up to me in a hotel room and she said, I should have never made those tweets. And I said, you know what? It's fine. Don't worry about it. We proceeded to become friends. Yes, Gabby, you apologized to me and I forgave you. However, if I do some heinous shit and I hurt someone and I apologize to them and they say, it's okay. And then five years later, six years later, however many years later, I say, I never did that. What are you talking about? This was the day the story broke and I hadn't seen the article yet. Whatever he tweeted, I genuinely have no idea what his tweet was. But I remember I responded with a current Vine meme, which was a Big Sean Lil Wayne song. Beware, beware, beware of a woman with a broken heart. So that was a Vine meme. For those of you who are on Vine at the time, you remember it. I don't remember what he said. Obviously it had nothing to do with the rape case. So that was that day before I ever saw it. The tweet is deleted because I was like, oh shit, I didn't understand the context of anything about this. And that's why it's gone. Because I didn't stand by what it said once I understood the context of everything that was happening. That is called taking back your apology. Your apology no longer exists because you went on an entire campaign saying, I never tweeted in support of Curtis Lepore. I never defended Curtis Lepore. That has been your stance since the beginning of when all of this got outed. But you'll see, she brings up multiple times how she apologized to me. That apology was retracted the second you started denying you ever did anything that needed an apology in the first place. I apologized to Jesse on Twitter in 2019 after her Gabby Hanna needs to be stopped video was posted. That was after she was tweeting that I was a shitty person and then liking tweets and replying to tweets that made it very obvious that it was about me. This is a theme with Gabby. She really cannot handle people subtweeting her or liking tweets that are not praising her. It was an issue she had with Brandon Calvillo. You call or you text me and then you're like, you know, like why why the fuck did you like that tweet? And I was like, first I didn't know how you did that so quickly. Like that yeah, was the thing I, I didn't know. You said to me, you were just like, what's wrong with you that you're like stalking my likes on yeah. Twitter? And I was like, we're both verified. From my point of view, you came at me very hard. I'm like, sure I did. You you said, What the fuck did you like that? Like you're a piece of shit, like you're a loser. I don't think I said you that. You said I'm a piece of shit. You, no, you, not not off the bat. It was an issue she had with Oscar Wilde. I don't really know why you have a problem with me liking somebody what verified account has to do with anything. You're you're very obsessed with numbers. She cannot handle people liking anything that is not in her favor or saying anything about her, even if you don't say her name. And you're gonna see a common theme of that because the majority of what Gabby Hanna has on me that she's gonna show in her series are subtweets or places and videos where where I was mentioning someone and I don't even say a name and she either assumes it's about her or even if it was about her, like I had a story time channel. It's just so much nonsense. It's really nonsense. And I'm not just saying that to downplay anything. I'm saying that as like, subtweets and tweets that people like is not like cold hard evidence gabby it's just what people do on twitter and after i apologized on twitter she talked shit about me on kathleen light's channel person, no matter what you do to me i'm not taking anything to the internet like okay. if we had anything meaningful well, i'm not person no. i just did my gabby <laughs> i can't be like yes me nothing from the internet woo -woo. Jesse didn't even bring it to the internet because there are things she didn't talk about Things that we all know about. Girl, shut up. <laughs> the thing that bothers me so much about addressing all of this is that my issues with Gabby are very hurtful, very painful, dark, traumatic. And then she brings out things like this. And it's like, you see, Jesse was shit talking me on Kathleen Light's channel. Did you watch that and really? really compare that to what we're talking about right now? We're talking about you were friends with the man who raped me and lied about it. And you're talking about, I was having a mukbang with Kathleen and I told her to shut up because we brought, <sighs> Oh my gosh. Really quickly, I wanna add because she keeps talking about like, I apologized and then Jesse went to go talk shit. You apologized because you felt cornered. You did not apologize because you meant it. And the way that I know that for a fact is as soon as my video went up, you messaged a 15 year old girl and told her how isolated being my friend made you feel. And that that's probably why you told me that Curtis's friends didn't rape me. And you caught the situation surrounding my rape, all of the public fallout, all of the bashing, the death threats I've received, the horrendous messages I've received, the shit that I've suffered, you called that rape drama. That is what she chose to do before she apologized. So forgive me, Gabby if I didn't buy your apology, because every apology you've ever given me over the years, you've either retracted it or you've proven that you don't mean it. So I'm sorry I went on Kathleen's channel and joked 
after your apology. Not everybody obviously has to do it on a public domain. That's my last resort. That was after many years of trying to solve things privately. Gabby has this theme of thinking that because people are being nice to her or having civil conversations with her, that we love her and we praise her and we would never say a bad thing about her. Gabby is an extremely difficult person to deal with privately. Not if you're praising her, not if you're telling her she's the most beautiful, wonderful, thoughtful human being you've ever met, but if you have any issue with Gabby, it is extremely difficult and scary. I know a lot of people have used that word to describe her. It is the perfect word to describe her. She bombards you. She will hit you below the belt, tell you some of the most hurtful shit you have ever heard from another human being. So for you to put like, oh, she asked me for work. It's covered in the series. Gabby, you've already put all those text messages in your last video. It doesn't do anything. I was nice to you. Okay. She also continued to like tweets that were about me, respond to tweets that were about me, respond to comments that were about me, and just continue the perpetual public shitting on me. I have not shit on you publicly nearly as hard as you have shit on me. You have shit on me like nobody else has shit on me. The only person that's shit on me publicly like you is Curtis Lepore. It's again with the theme of people can't like tweets that are against you. Gabby, I don't like you. I didn't seem to get the memo where we can only like tweets that are in support of Gabby Hanna on Twitter. This does not include any of the times that I've apologized to Jesse every time she blackmailed me, threatened me, talked about me in a YouTube video, tweeted about me, reached out to somebody about me. We're gonna get into the blackmail and threats because she goes into it again in a little bit, so hold for that one. But again, with the tweets and mentioning you in videos, Gabby, not only did I have a story time channel, you had a story time channel. How many times have you mentioned someone on your channel that didn't want to be mentioned, that didn't ask to be mentioned in a story time? That's how they work. Not only is it completely my right to say whatever the hell I want on my channel, sure, you can feel how you want to feel about it, but I can do and say what I want on my channel, much like you're doing and saying whatever you want, despite 90% of the internet begging you to stop right now. So not only is that my right, but if you've heard the phone call, you hear multiple times where she accuses me of talking talking about her in a YouTube video. And I'm just like, Gabby, that was not about you. So fast forward to June, 2021, Jesse unprovoked released a very highly edited and manipulated version of the phone call. And in posting it, she said something along the lines of, I'm tired of the back and forth. I just want to be left alone. Where was the back and forth? We went to my Twitter, my Instagram, my YouTube. There was no back and forth. This is something that Jesse likes to do a lot. She drops an atomic bomb and then she says, leave me alone, leave me alone. And I'm like, I think what she was considering a back and forth was that I was asked about her in a BuzzFeed article. And I said that I already apologized to her. And to her, that warranted the response of leaking a private phone call as a way to hurt me. As we've already discussed, this was not unprovoked. Multiple times you have brought this situation up. You know what it is to blackmail a person, to threaten them when their family member is in the hospital and then be like, well, I just mentioned you a couple times after that. Why are you so upset? I'm upset because you've put me through hell this last year, Gabby. Only Gabby could do an entire article talking about every single one of her controversies. And when one of those controversies comes back to bite her in the ass, act surprised by that. That was not an article about your music. That was not an article about just what you're up to in life. And then maybe you mentioned something. No, that was an article where you were provoking every single person that you've had an issue with. And you thought nothing was gonna come out of that? Dude, like, why am I being asked about Jesse Smiles in a BuzzFeed article? because Jesse Smiles made sure that I would be asked about her for the rest of my fucking career, probably. You have every right in an interview, Gabby, especially a BuzzFeed interview, to say, I am not gonna talk about this, this, and that. If you don't wanna talk about your affiliation with Curtis Support or me ever again, you don't have to. Don't allow an interviewer to ask you about it. And guess what? Maybe the people that you've hurt will stop being so fucking upset and then we can all move on with our life. But don't pretend that I'm just here waiting for a moment where you mentioned Curtis, when nowadays the only time I hear Curtis's name is when you're talking about it. Do you know how long I have worked and I have had to overcome shit to stop hearing that man's name every corner I turned? I left Vine when I had 3.6 million followers and no clue how I was gonna make money because that was literally my only means of income at the time. And I left because I was sick and tired of hearing Curtis's name and being told that he should have killed me and that I'm too ugly to rape or that he didn't rape me. I was sick and tired of that. And so I left that app and I built myself an entire new audience. And even when I've talked about it over the years, a lot of my followers are survivors and I have a very compassionate and understanding follower base. And I'm very, very grateful for that because I didn't have that for a long time. And I thought I had gotten over that point where I couldn't talk about Curtis without being bashed. You know, for a long time I could talk about it and, and I had people supporting me. After Me Too, everything changed. People actually started fucking listening and having compassion. And I was like, wow, I can actually talk about what happened with me without being fucking bashed or hearing Curtis's name in a taunting way or a, oh, he didn't fucking do this to you and just horrendous shit until Gabby Hanna. You bring up the Curtis situation 
to paint me as a liar, to paint it as if I start rumors about you when you're releasing music. You tell people that I am a liar, that I'm malicious, that I abuse you, and you don't think that's a back and forth? You don't see how that pushes someone? You don't see how fucking upsetting it is that the only time I have to hear about Curtis Lepore is out of your mouth now and out of your fans' mouths? You could have addressed this situation honestly, and none of this would have happened. In 2019, screw the apology. You could have just been honest and said, yes, I did defend Curtis in 2014. And you know what? I should have never done that. And I shouldn't have provided Jesse's personal text messages and information about her medication and her trauma as an effort to convince this person that I never defended Curtis because I actually did defend Curtis. Anything, Gabby. And this would have been done. But because you cannot just accept the part that you have in situations, the ways that you've genuinely hurt people, you have pushed it as far as this. And you're acting surprised by it. Trust me, I also don't want to be asked about Jesse in a BuzzFeed article. I have a career in entertainment. I do press. I am allowed to talk about my Life. This is something that has become a huge part of my story, much to my dismay. But it's not right for you to be able to say whatever you want, and then I can't be asked about it, I can't respond about it, I can't defend myself, I can't share my side of the story. Not only is it not your story to tell, as I think most people would understand that, but when every time you bring it up or you address it, you lie and you say a different story. Oh, I never defended him. Oh, but I did, but I forgot about that. Or I never interacted with him. Oh, actually I did, I went to dinner with him, but that I, I didn't remember that. That is enough. Unless you're just gonna address it to admit the truth without trying to deflect and say, I'm the one in the wrong and actually own up to the part that you've had in not only doing the things that you've done, but lying about them and causing people to harass me over your lies. Unless you're gonna do that, then yeah, I think it is fair to say, stop talking about anything that has to do with me and Curtis Lepore. And I have asked you multiple times, this is a traumatic situation. I do not wanna talk about this anymore. And I certainly don't wanna be talking about it to have to rectify the lies that you've told. It's not fair. So you are allowed to respond in any way you see fit. But when you lie about it, I'm allowed to tell you that I don't want you talking about it anymore. You don't have to oblige. You don't have to listen to me, but that makes you a shitty person. And that's just what it is. I was asked about her because since 2015, Jesse has made it her mission to align me with her and finally in 2019 it worked and that's been my life ever since. That is the sickest shit I've ever heard. I have made it my mission to align you with my rapist. Like I just woke up one day and really wanted you to have anything to do with my rapist? You think that it didn't fucking kill me? That you've had dinner with him? You've been to parties with him? You have had conversations where you've asked him about his side of that night? I wanted that? Do you understand how sick that fucking sounds? And I know to the viewer, it may seem like a back and forth, but that's because you don't see what I don't respond to. You only see what I respond to. You don't see the hundreds of thousands of views that go missing off of her channel when she posts a video about me. When I posted my video about Gabby, I did not expect for it to garner the attention that it garnered. It was very, very intense for me. Over six million people have seen that video that I posted about Gabby, which is an insane and extremely intimidating number. And full disclosure, there's a lot of videos I don't like on my channel. Frankly, I wish I could delete all my story times, but I feel like my followers would be very upset with me. I don't like that era of my life. I don't like how I talked about people, even when I was trying to be funny. I never disrespected people on purpose or were like, oh, this fucking person, I hate this person. But even in the ways I tried to make things funny, I'm like, Jesse, ew, because it's just not who I am anymore. So yeah, when I posted my video about Gabby, there were videos both with Gabby that I didn't want up anymore. And there were videos that I just looked at and I was like, ew, gross. And I privated them. It's not a mystery, Gabby. I was being overly cautious because way more people than I thought were gonna see my video saw my video. And so I kind of panicked and was like, wait, I don't want them to see this story time or this story time because what the fuck, that's embarrassing. I don't even understand what the point of bringing that up is, but sure. Yes, I privated some videos when I posted my video about Gabby. You don't see the hundreds of tweets that she mass unliked. You don't see the tweet and delete. First of all, the tweet that you're putting up, everybody's seen it. Furthermore, mass unlike tweets? How does someone even do that? I'm not joking. How do you mass unlike tweets? I'm so confused. I've never done that in my life. Full disclosure, that did not happen. So you don't see the voice messages and the text that she sends me threatening me, crossing my boundaries that I'm setting firmly and telling me that if I don't do what she wants that she's going to put out another video with more evidence. And the evidence being tweets that I deleted in 2014. I mean, anybody that can read saw on the screen I was not threatening Gabby. Why do you put up text and then say something completely different? What if someone's not able to look at 
at the screen? What if they're doing laundry while they're watching your video and now they believe I threatened you with evidence? It's just, it's irresponsible. It's just an irresponsible way to deliver information. I'm saying this with my whole fucking chest and I'm past the point of needing or wanting people to believe me. I'm saying it for me. This is the truth. Jesse is my abuser. Since 2015, I have been the victim of narcissistic abuse, blackmail, harassment, stalking, slander, smear campaigns, gaslighting, threats of physical violence and online harassment since March of 2015. I'm gonna try to do this and I'm gonna try to not get so fucking angry, but it is so beyond irresponsible as a creator with a platform your size to accuse every single person that you don't like, that you've had issues with, and that you've hurt of abusing you, of being narcissist. This isn't me starting drama. This is me responding to abuse since 2018. Uh, she inserted herself into this. I was speaking about my poetry in a situation involving my poetry and talking about the unfair criticism that women get. And Angelica inserted herself and said that it wasn't fair for me to call my bully a bully because that's what narcissistic gaslighting abusive people do. She's not a fucking artist. I don't care about her fucking opinion because she has no accomplishments in art or has proven to me that she's actually intellectual enough to understand art. I accept my criticism from talented, smart people, not abusive, toxic, exploitative bullies on YouTube. You're now saying I blackmailed you? I threatened you? Let's get into that. I'm going to go into what Gabby Hanna considers blackmail. I'm going to talk about that situation, wh where she thinks I blackmailed her. And I'm going to go into the physical violence. I honestly don't know what she means with threats other than her probably thinking that in a story time, I threatened that I was going to say something else. The connections, I can't connect them. Okay. So I'm going to get into what I can tangibly touch and explain because everything else at this point feels erratic and confusing. So in order to talk about the physical violence accusation, we're going to have to talk about a situation that is kind of long. It all ties in together. I promise. Bear with me. I know. I'm sorry. This is awful. I dated a guy in 2015 and his name was Richie. He's a very sweet guy. We're on good terms still. He's a friend of mine. But during our relationship, there was a few things that Gabby did that made me feel uncomfortable. One of them she actually made a story time about and it was when I had a rooftop barbecue with a bunch of friends and her and Richie sat across from each other the entire night and shared wine, like literally drinking from the wine bottle just between them two. They did not mingle or talk to anyone else virtually the entire night and it made me feel uncomfortable. And as much as Gabby in her story time paints it as me being insane for feeling uncomfortable about that situation. Now I have admitted in the past that I myself have had some crazy bitch moments. Everyone has crazy bitch moments. Even the calmest, most level-headed Mother Teresa, deep breath, clear-minded person in the world has her crazy bitch moments. But there is a huge astronomical difference between having crazy bitch moments and being a crazy bitch. Sometimes it's hard to believe now here where I am in my life that I ever put up with this type of behavior, the amount of stories that I have. But that's kind of my issue that I learned about myself thanks to a year of therapy is I seek out like emotionally unstable, neurotic people and I try to fix them. So like I said, I have a lot of stories about this friend in particular, but I think that this is the first one where I was like, oh, you're psychotic. Let's just get into the story a little bit so you can see um, my vibe was not off. Fast forward, me and Richie break up and it was not great in the beginning. Our breakup was pretty messy, honestly. Around that same time, I had gone to Oprah's Life You Want weekend. It was a very life-changing weekend for me. I realized a lot of things, but one of the main things that I realized was I didn't want to be friends with Gabby Hanna anymore. There was no big thing that happened, no big fight that could explain everything. I just felt like our relationship was toxic. I felt like she contributed a lot of negativity into my life. And I'm not just saying this to like be a bitch, but there was multiple times where people in my life who lived with me would tell me, hey, let me know when Gabby's coming over so I can stay in my room. Like there was a negative presence and I just didn't want that in my life anymore. I found myself talking more shit than I've ever talked in my entire life, getting into drama. So I texted her and I said, hey, I don't wanna be friends anymore. And I've had this moment with multiple friends. You know, everybody can have a time in their relationship where it's like, this isn't working out. And I've always said this, but the way that a person responds when you tell them, hey, this is not working, you know, it's a negative thing for both of us. The way that they respond in that moment says everything about them. And obviously I can't get into details because I don't have the text messages, but the gist of it was she told me I needed therapy. She told me that I cut everyone out of my life, that it's a pattern in my life and that I was going to end up alone pretty much. So that was awful. And it was a pretty bad falling out. Fast forward a little more. I go to a bar and I see a guy that Gabby had dated. 
dated. Mind you, I was friends with him way before Gabby dated him. And he showed up at the bar because he's friends with the people I'm friends with. He came up to me. He said, hey, where's Gabby? And I said, and I quote, I don't know. I'm not friends with her anymore. To which he responded, oh good. She's crazy. She scares me. That is what he said. And I don't know if him saying that maybe he thought I was going to tell Gabby, but he went to Gabby and told her that I talked shit about her. And I didn't do that. I did say we're not friends. I laughed when he said she was crazy. I did do that. But we did not even harp on that. Like everyone else just got drunk and we all had a good night. Like I said, I guess he um, told her that I talked shit about her. I don't know. But she decided to contact my ex-boyfriend, Richie. And I know this because he called me one day and said, hey, can you please come to my house? And I was like, why? And he told me he wanted to talk to me. And I went to his house and he showed me text messages from Gabby. She literally told him that I was horrible. She told him I was a slut. She told him that I cheated on him or that I slept with someone as soon as I broke up with him. And it gets worse because then she proposes that they have sex with each other. And he agreed. Although I was upset with both of them for this, I was more upset with Gabby because she would have never told me. Richie told me because he has a fucking heart and he has a conscience. And he was like, I'm sorry. I don't know why the fuck I put myself in this situation. I would never have sex with her. I saw the text messages where she tried to execute having sex with him saying, hey, what are you doing tonight? And he's like, I have work early tomorrow. And when I come confronted Gabby about this, specifically about the part where she calls me a slut. She said that she called me that because that's what everyone says about me. This was my best friend. This was someone that I trusted, that I just led into my life. And all a fucking long, she was just judging me. So the times in the messages where you admit to telling him I'm a slut and all that stuff, that never happened either, right? Every single time that her and I have ever spoken about this, she continues to say, well, Jesse, if I wanted to do it, I could have done it. So just get over it. I did not try to have sex with Richie because if I wanted to, I would have. When he asked me to the, Oh, I there it is. Done. There it is. The favorite sentence you say in the emails. If I wanted to, I could have. Anyway, no, as I was saying. If I wanted to have sex with Richie, I would. So stop telling people that I tried to fuck your boyfriend when I did it. So fast forward to a couple months later after that took place and I make a video called People I Hate. This video was like a pet peeves video. It was me talking about like, oh, I hate when people at the airport do this and that. Like it wasn't an actual People I Hate video. I don't know if the part where I say YouTubers who say welcome back, that that bothers me. I didn't even know she said welcome. That's 90% of YouTube. And then also I said when girls call you their best friend right away and like leech onto you, which was not the case with Gabby at all. We had a very like steady friendship and it was mutual we both called each other our best friend like it's just I don't know what she thought was about her in that but again Gabby wants to talk about patterns it's a pattern with Gabby to believe that things that are not about her are about her and so she took that video thought I was talking about her and ran with it she contacted Richie and she asked him if he would be in a video with her exposing me for what God knows what but exposing me nonetheless she literally asked him to sit next to her and expose me. I lost my shit when Richie called me and told me that. Richie is not your pawn to fuck with me, Gabby. Fast forward a couple weeks after that, we had VidCon and I knew I might run into Gabby and I had to mentally prepare myself for that because I was completely pissed. I arrive at VidCon, I go into the lobby and I talk to a mutual manager of ours. And she was talking to me about getting all settled in and stuff. And before I left, tells me, oh, by the way, Gabby was just here. She was looking for you. I just played it off and I kept it pushing. And then a couple hours later at a cocktail hour, I was told again by someone that you were looking for me. And I'm not going to lie. I was fucking upset. I could not understand how you had the audacity to look for me so much when you knew that we were having an issue because you had just tried to recruit my ex-boyfriend to be in an exposed video about me. So you weren't looking for me to play patty cake. You were looking for me to either talk something out or start conflict. I don't know what. Fast forward even more. I think it might've been the next night. I went to a party and I was drunk. No excuse for this, but I was drunk. I encountered one of our mutual friends who told me that Gabby was looking for me again and I lost it. That's the only way to describe how angry I got. And I unblocked Gabby's number and I texted her. If you keep looking for me, you're going to find me and I'm going to punch you in the face. That is the physical violence threat. I immediately knew that I shouldn't have sent that to her. So I went to my room, I fell asleep, and the next morning I left VidCon early because that's my responsibility to remove myself from a situation where I'm losing control. But that's not the end of it because even after sending that text message, which I think most people would look at and say, oh, this person's obviously at their mental break, Gabby decided that she was gonna reach out to multiple people, but one of them being Alex James, and send him 
a series of text messages asking where I am, if I went home, and if he could relay a message. She wanted him to send a message to me when I think I made it clear that I don't want any messages and I don't want to be found by her. I don't want to be talked to by her. I think my message made that pretty clear. And in those text messages, she said that if he can't get those messages to me, then she'll just get a random to do it, which is something that Gabby did a lot. And it really frustrates me that she talks about boundaries when she has never respected a single boundary in my entire life. When I block her, she goes to my email and she emails me anyway. When I make it clear that I don't want to talk to her. She goes to other people to get messages to me. There is no escaping her and she makes it seem like I want so much to do with her. She literally has always pushed and pushed and pushed until I'm like, exploding. I don't know what else to do. So anyway, uh, Alex did not relay that message to me. She ended up emailing me the message herself. Alex asked her if she figured it out and she says, nah, it doesn't matter. I just need to not take it personally. She has a mental disorder. I'm not saying that to be like, she's crazy. She's just genuinely sick and I can't help how her mind works. It's just the same as my mom. You just can't reason with people whose brains function that way. It's just hard to not take it personally and to have someone have such a weird skewed perception of you. And when she emailed me, she basically was like, I have no idea why you're upset with me. I thought everything was fine. Why did it get to this point? And I feel like I'm going insane. I'm like, Gabby, you tried to recruit Richie for an exposed video about me. The person you tried to have sex with to spite me. Yeah, I'm fucking pissed. Stop looking for me. I don't want to talk to you. Go away. And this is after she had been in house with Curtis and allowed him to apologize to her if he had ever been rude at events. This was after that. So this is not the only thing you've done to spite me. And now you're just pissing me off. And when I point that out to Gabby and I say, Gabby, you tried to recruit Richie for an exposed video. She's like, well, it was just a preemptive measure. Gabby has a history and a pattern, if you will, of not addressing things until they're shoved in her face. She will hide anything and everything that she has to do with a situation. It's not a memory thing. She's always done this. That event had just happened a few days before she emailed me. She knows damn well that she had tried to recruit Richie for this little exposed video. And you're going to pretend to not know. You pretend to not know because you think I don't know. She will not address anything or be honest about anything until you show that you have proof of it. That is why people take things public with you, Gabby. That is why people talk about you publicly because privately you will bombard them. You will make them feel like what they think happened never happened and it's frustrating. So that's the threat of physical violence that she's talking about. And the reason why this series scared me is because again, Gabby's very irresponsible with how she distributes information. When this is how you describe an event, That's scary, Gabby. You're painting it as like, I just want to punch people for no reason. Again, not right how I handled it, should have handled it better, but there's a big difference between let's go get food and drinks, I'm gonna punch you in the face, and you try to do a bunch of shit that you knew would piss me off, and then you continue to push and push and push me until I broke, I snapped. Now the blackmail, much quicker to address, it's not as long and convoluted as a story. So for the blackmail, what she's referring to started when she emailed me and congratulated me on my pregnancy with my son in 2017. I responded and thanked her. Um, I had her number blocked. That's why she messaged me. But I responded nicely anyway and said, I appreciate that hope you're doing well. Four months later, without me and her having any direct contact, it's not like me and her were going at it and I expected retaliation, like nothing happened. She says I tweeted something. At this point, I could have tweeted anything and she could have said it was about her. I really don't know. But four months later, I was seven months pregnant. One night, I get a bunch of tweets. Hey, I think Gabby's new story time is about you. And the story time was about the time where she stole my man. And the man she's referring to is Richie. So seeing that story time and how nasty she spoke about me, cause she wasn't just saying a story, she was being disgusting. How you say that shit when four months earlier you were like, you're so positive in life now, congratulations. It was disgusting to me. And quite frankly, she lied in it because no, I'm not insane, Gabby. The story ended with you trying to have sex with Richie. I was like, why are you going so hard on a topic where you're dead wrong for? But anyway, I texted her and we spoke about this on the phone call. I said something to the effect of, hey, what the fuck? If you keep this video up, I'm gonna have to defend myself. Like you're lying in this video. And that is what Gabby Hanna 
deems as blackmail. I am not lying. That is what happened. I have never in my life said, hey, Gabby, if you don't take that video down, this is going to be really bad for you. You have 48 hours to take the video down, then sign a non-disclosure agreement about the situation with Richie and do whatever the hell else I come up with or else I'm going to expose you. No, Gabby, I never did that. That's you. And what you did is actually textbook blackmail. And if I had any fucking money or any will to deal with you in court for multiple years and prolong this, then I would take you to court because not only did you blackmail me, what you're doing in this series is fulfilling that threat. So I just find it very ironic that she thinks a text message where I'm saying, if you're going to leave that video up, I'm going to defend myself. She thinks that's blackmail with what she's done. It's just so bizarre. And she says it with such conviction. Notice how when I posted the tweets, I didn't even say blackmail. I called it an ultimatum because I'm careful with my fucking words, Gabby. You can't go around calling people abusers because you don't like them, because shit has happened with them. That's the physical violence. That's all the fucking threats that she's talking about. She takes tweets, subtweets as threats. She sees things and I'm not trying to like gaslight her. She just sees things where they're not there. That people I hate video had nothing to do with her. And it just genuinely leaves you in a place where you don't want to invalidate someone else, but you're also like, you're just saying stories that never happened, Gabby. Parts of what Gabby has done to me, if you guys have been around for long enough to witness, has been emotional abuse. What she's done in regards to my trauma and airing it out and lying about it and making me the villain of it in itself is emotional abuse to a certain extent. However, I would never refer to Gabby Hanna as my abuser. That is not a term you throw around. And that's not counting the first time I ever had an interaction with Jesse Smiles, which was when she mobilized her fans in 2013 when she had well over a million followers and I had 10,000 and had just started Vine. What she's talking about is very confusing because I never mobilized my fans against her. But what actually happened is that she made a Vine where she said that she was coming for my crown or something. And I'm going to be completely honest. It wasn't like a horrendous Vine where she was being awful to me, but I picked up a vibe. Okay. I, I didn't like her energy, the way she delivered it. I don't know. She just gave me a bad feeling. So I blocked her. I don't remember if I commented on it, but I might've commented something like this is cringe or something along those lines. I don't remember exactly, but the point is I blocked her. I did not mobilize fans against her. I did not make a vine and say, guys, what the fuck is up with this girl? But I did block her and she has expressed to me that that hurt her feelings. And so for that, I'm sorry that I blocked you in 2013 because you rap battled me. Jesse continues to move the goalposts and no matter what, I will never be free of her abuse because nothing will ever be good enough because her goal is for me to suffer. The goalpost never moves. The thing I want remains the same. And that is for you to leave me alone. Everything I have ever said about you has been a response to your actions towards me. If you stop being horrible to me, I will stop responding to you. Hand to God. Even though this last year you didn't leave me alone, I still left you alone because I don't want anything to do with you. The proof is in the fucking pudding, Gabby. You don't stop. Whether it's private, and that was a big thing in our phone call where she's like, you publicly say things about me. You publicly tweet. You publicly subtweet. Gabby, in private, you try to convince everyone I'm mentally ill and have mental disorders. You lie to people and tell them awful shit about me. Things like I'm a slut. You do things that make me upset and then you act so flabbergasted that I'm upset. Stop lying about situations that hurt me. Stop doing things to hurt me on purpose. And then I won't have anything to react to, Gabby. But I don't know who you think you're dealing with, although I am an emotional and very sensitive person. I'm not gonna fucking take things lying down. I'm gonna have things to say. I'm a human being and I'm a strong woman. You think I'm just gonna be like, oh, Gabby said things, but it's okay, no big deal. No, it pisses me off and I have every right to say something. So if you want things to stop, all you have to do is stop. Everything started in 2019 because I DM somebody who tweeted that I chose my best friend's and I asked her to please show me the evidence. She insisted to me that the evidence existed. She said she remembered saw, seeing a tweet that I said I was standing by Curtis's side no matter what, that did not exist. She sent me a vine that it was not me in the vine. So now that Jesse had to drop the I chose my best friend's I'm a social climber story that she's been pushing since 2015. What I find really interesting about this screenshot, and she puts it on the screen, that the tweets I'm talking about are not about Curtis. The tweets that she put on screen are about Richie. Richie had started a Vine account where he was talking about how we broke up and she commented on his Vines and I thought that was disgusting. And then the tweets on the right are Jen. Jen Dent, my friend, not me. So what she's referring to, it's, it's, this is such a convoluted story, but basically that's true. There were times when I would want to say something and I just felt like I couldn't. I felt like it would be too much drama. I feel like I would be bringing up too much if it was on my account. And so Jen would be like, just tweet on my account. I would do it and I shit you not, ask Jen. Two minutes later, it was deleted. It was like a diary. It was like a diary that I just needed to like, bleh, like word vomit and then I would delete it. This is really frustrating because she's trying to paint the picture as if when Jen tweeted those things, it was really me. No tweet I have ever made on Jen's account, which I've already explained, super immature. I felt like I couldn't use my own voice to say certain things, mainly about Curtis 
Not about Gabby ever, I don't think. But everything I've ever said on Jen's account, deleted. I never left a tweet up. So everything that she's talking about, Jen herself said. And she's trying to put this clip of me saying like, yes, I used to log into Jen's Twitter account and paint it as if these tweets are me. Gabby, no. And Jen herself tweeted, uh, yeah, I said that and I'd say it again. She moved on to say that I hung out with her and his friends, which didn't happen. You never hung out with Curtis and his friends? That was proven on the phone call. And then what's funny is that later on in this video, she admits there's many more times that people didn't even know about. This is the shit I'm talking about where she's like, well, why do you keep responding? I keep responding because you keep lying. And even later on in this video, you contradict this statement, but like, this is why this is so frustrating for me. Which one is it, Gabby? Did you hang out with him? Did you not hang out with him? We all know the answer. I'm just wondering which one you're gonna say. She lied in saying that he pulled me aside and told me and that we talked in person. He didn't call you. You hung out with Curtis's friends. Curtis was there. This is what you told me. He pulled you to the side and he told you that. He told you, I'm so sorry I was mean to you. I can't believe what Jesse did to you. Trying to get on your side. That, that part's true, but it happened in person. Absolutely did not happen. And I know that didn't happen. It was a FaceTime call. And I know for a fact it was a FaceTime call because he recorded it and blackmailed me with it. I didn't know that she had FaceTimed Curtis Lepore until I had a phone call with her last summer. The reason why I said, it wasn't a FaceTime call, this happened in person, is because Gabby has hidden all of her interactions with Curtis and it's only now that I know the majority of them, I'm sure there's more that I don't know about, but she's acting like it was a FaceTime call. Gabby, I didn't know that because you've lied to me and you never told me about a FaceTime call. But either way, she now goes into the call, which is super, disturbing. She brought up the tweets that I already apologized for in 2014. And then when that kind of fell through, because she herself said, don't you remember you apologized to me for those tweets? That's how we became friends. So then she realized that she couldn't use the tweets anymore. So then she threatened me into a phone call that I told her I was not ready or in the headspace for. How do you argue with someone that reads the same words in which you're saying you are not threatening them. You don't want to make a video. These are my emotions. This is how I'm feeling. Trust me. I don't want to make a video. I don't want to pressure you into a phone call. How do you argue with the person that reads those words and sees I'm going to make a video and I have evidence and I'm threatening you. That is why Gabby and I have so many issues. We not only don't see eye to eye, we exist in different realities. And it is what it is, I guess. I was so fucking mentally unwell that summer. And I don't think that any of you guys would fucking argue that. I needed the time and space to get better before approaching a conversation with my fucking abuser, dude. And then she continued to threaten me, telling me that if I didn't talk to her, that she was gonna have to make another fucking video about me. If I'm your abuser, why did you paint us as being super civil and being able to have great conversations? Jesse and I have been in a really good place for years. I congratulated her publicly on her wedding. She responded publicly. And we've had a lot of conversations over the years with no problem. I'm doing this publicly because you have me blocked and I don't think that it's appropriate for me to reach out to you privately given that circumstance. Jesse, your number has never been blocked on my phone. I feel it through the years and especially recently that you and I have had some really positive discourse and we have proved that we're capable of civil conversation. I truly thought that we've put all this behind us, but if there's something that you are hurt by that you want to talk about or something we've talked about that you'd like to talk about again, I'm all ears. I'm happy to listen to you. We can talk privately if you'd like. We can do it publicly in the form of a video or podcast. We can have a private conversation where we record it just so that we have it for ourselves. Am I your abuser or am I someone that you have civil conversations with? Are you open to having a conversation with me or are you terrified about having a conversation with me because I'm your abuser? It can't be both, Gabby. So I had the conversation even though I knew that she was just trying to catch me in something and get something that she could use and that's exactly what she did. I find that ridiculous because I quite literally said a million times in that phone call that I wanted this to end, that I would not talk about her, that she could sue me if she wanted to, that I did not want to make this public or continue this publicly. What part of that and saying that a million times made you feel like I was waiting for you to slip up so I can expose you. The fact that I spoke to Curtis was absolutely not news to Jesse. The fact that he told me the story was absolutely not news to Jesse. I told her that in 2015. That's why she started the rumor that I chose my best friend's and that I was a social climber. No, you didn't, Gabby. No, you did not. You have been proven to not be honest, to not remember things how they went down. So how dare you tell me what you told me in 2015? I think I would fucking remember if my ex-best friend told me that she allowed the man that raped me to tell her about that night. I think I would have remembered that. Jesse was looking for any moment that she possibly could so that she could get emotional on the call because she was filming it and she always knew she was going to post it. I was waiting for a moment to get emotional on the call. Gabby, the last time I checked, I haven't won any fucking Oscars. And this whole filming thing, a lot of people have been I'm like, well, why Jesse film it? I don't understand. Let me break it down for you. I recorded the call on photo booth. I was not gonna set up my microphone and start recording audio professionally. I literally was like, I'm just gonna record it on my laptop. And my computer is always aimed at me because I have my laptop on a stand and then I have my big monitor that I edit on. So I have to have the screen turned to me so that I can drag things to my monitor. You think I set up a fucking tripod? Do you think that I wouldn't have, number one, perhaps dressed for the occasion when half of it, I'm not even wearing a bra and I'm wearing a fucking robe and I look haggard as fuck? Do you think that I filmed that and was being opportunistic about that and wanting 
to get emotional to show people? Is that why I held on to that for a year? If I wanted to do this for attention and for emotion, I would have put that phone call on my YouTube channel the second we fucking had it. I didn't want this. I didn't want people to see me like that. For you again, to interpret someone displaying emotion as manipulative says a lot more about you than it does to me. I think you have a lot of issues inside yourself that manipulates other people with emotion, if I'm being completely honest, because I could never look at a video of someone crying like that and feeling the way that I felt and be like, oh, they were just looking for a moment to get emotional. Gabby, do you have any empathy for me at all as a human being? I mean, I know the answer to that. The one thing I say on the call is, I think I tell her, I did say this because I, I remember putting it into the series too. On the call, I was like, Jesse, like this isn't news. I've told you this in 2015. This was public knowledge. I wrote it in the notes app, apology. And the reason I said that is because I believed I did because it happened. I would never say something on purpose that would be that easy to disprove, especially to somebody like her who's looking for a lie. I thought that I put that in the notes app apology because I thought I did. The same way you thought you put that in the notes app apology, you thought you told me about the story. I never knew about it. You never included it in your apology. You just think you do things and you didn't. I wasn't looking for a reason for you to lie. I just went to go check after you insisted multiple times when I told you, please, let's change the subject. You insisted, no, no, but I wrote that in my notes and I just thought you knew about that. So I went and checked your notes of the apology and it wasn't there. I wasn't looking for anything, Gabby. It was literally right there. You asked me to go check. So the reason I removed it from the first draft was because I never wanted to talk directly about Jess Jesse's story because I knew by saying something like Curtis told me his side of the story that it would start opening up questions. Well, what did they both say? This is something that I literally never wanted to fucking do. I never wanted to do any of this. She says on screen that if I said I asked Curtis what his story was, it would open up questions of if the story matched and if it didn't, how I handled his lie. I thought he was the one that asked you to tell you about that night. He said, do you mind if I tell you story of that night. And I said, I mean, yeah, that's fine. Like I've heard her side. You can tell me yours. Nothing that Gabby says about her interactions with Curtis are honest. I believe that a hundred percent. She either doesn't remember them genuinely or is hiding them on purpose. But now because she put out a very highly edited and manipulated portion of a private phone conversation used to make me look like I'm a fucking monster. Give me one way in which I removed context or made you look like a monster in a scenario where your own words didn't already make you look like a monster. Gabby talks about like, oh, Jesse drops atomic bombs on me. The atomic bombs I drop on you are your literal words, the words you speak and you write. If that is an atomic bomb on your life, you need to reconsider consider the way you treat people and the way you speak to people. She got upset that I used the clip that she posted from the phone call in my intro video. And I, like, so you can post it publicly. It involves me directly, but I'm not allowed to say anything about it. That's what I've been experiencing. You can just say whatever the fuck you want and do whatever the fuck you want. It can be as one-sided as possible and I just don't get a say. It involves you directly because you lied about a situation that is traumatic to me. Maybe I would feel okay with you talking about it if every time you did talk about it, you didn't lie. Use the clip of me crying all you want, Gabby. I asked you not to out of common decency. You just want to be able to talk about it to do it. You don't add anything productive or substantial to the conversation of you and Curtis Lepore. You only hurt me further. You only make me explain things regarding my trauma further and it has no benefit. That's why I told you not to continue talking about it. Not because I want to control the things you talk about, but because you're just hurtful with this fucking topic and you've proven to not only not be considerate or empathetic in any way when you're addressing it, but you lie about it. It's a wonder I don't want you talking about it. If you truly didn't want me to use the clips, if you truly didn't want me to talk about your trauma, then you should have just fucking left me alone and you're not afraid of me holding dude you're not afraid of me doing this because you think i might lie she's afraid because she knows i know the truth and she knows that i have the evidence to back it up i'm afraid you know the truth i don't even know what your truth is if i'm being completely honest and if i didn't want you to talk about my trauma i should have left you alone how about shut the fuck up about people's trauma period. You are so quick to tell people they can't speak about yours or situations that are sensitive to you, but someone else cannot ask you to stop lying, stop bringing a painful situation up to serve you. If you have an issue with me and things I've done to you, go ahead, Gabby, bring it up. Talk about the time I almost punched you or whatever you want to do. That is fine. That's your story to tell. That involves both of us. Go for it. But for you to feel like you even have the fucking right at this point with how much you've lied about the situation and then you're gonna have the audacity to tell me like, she's scared because I know the truth. Gabby, you never speak the truth. Even when you speak your truth, it's like so easily disprovable because it doesn't even make any sense. I'm scared of the way that you deliver information in such an irresponsible, unempathetic, horrible way. That's what I'm scared of, Gabby. Not the truth, your truth. There'd be no reason that she'd be so upset about this video or me leaking the phone call. She wouldn't be trying so hard to weaponize her trauma against me saying, don't talk about me and my trauma. Don't make me relive my trauma. Nobody did that but Jesse. How many times do I have to 
ignore Jesse trying to involve me in a trauma that has fucking nothing to do with me before I get to say something about it. And I know that I can also prove that anything I've ever done to you was a direct response to multiple attacks as a desperate move to try to get you to leave me the fuck alone. Can you please explain to me how becoming friends with the man who raped me after you were my best friend and I trusted you and I allowed you into my life in a very personal and vulnerable way? Can you explain how becoming friends with a rapist, period, is a direct action of me not leaving you alone? I'm very curious to hear your response because in my book, personally, just me, nothing in this world can make me be friends with a rapist. I know this seems random, but a lot of you guys remember my Sam Pepper story time where I almost fought Sam Pepper. But what a lot of you guys don't know is that that story included Gabby in it. Gabby was the person that I barely knew at the time who came into an apartment where I was and she was crying and she said that Sam Pepper pushed her. She had apologized to me for the tweets already, but we were not close friends. And what did I do? I went on Twitter and I told him to go fuck himself or something along those lines. And then I almost fought him at an event when him and Logan Paul came up to me and said, you weren't even there. Like you don't even know what you're talking about. And I said, I don't have to fucking be there. I saw my friend crying and I know who you are, what you've done to multiple women. And I was willing to not just not be friends with Sam Pepper and anyone that he associates with, I was ready to fight a grown man for hurting someone that I didn't even know at the time. Nothing in this world, Gabby, would have made me be friends with a rapist. Nothing in this world would have made me interact with a rapist, period. Not a phone call, not being in the same room. If there's a rapist near me, they better fucking run. So for you to say everything I've done is a direct action, please describe what action I've done that made you surround yourself and be in multiple scenarios and almost collaborate with Curtis Lepore. I told Jesse the truth on the call. I listened to Curtis when he asked me if he could tell me his side of the story because I knew the true story. Jesse showed me the evidence. She showed me the text messages. I heard her side of events. And if he was gonna try to say something that wasn't true, I was gonna call him the fuck out on it. I also listened to Curtis because he's a human being. And just like in real court, in the court of public opinion, if you're gonna judge and condemn somebody, you should at least hear them out. You're not the court of public opinion, Gabby. You were my best friend. We had just stopped being friends, had a falling out, not for a huge reason, but because I didn't want to continue you are friendship. You are not the court of public opinion. You were someone I fucking trusted. The reason Curtis called me is because the rumors that Jesse was spreading about me and the horrible shit that she was saying about me got back to him and he found out that we weren't friends anymore. So he asked a friend to put us in contact and got my number. And I do think it's also important to note that at the time, the entire community was still backing Curtis, including Jesse's best friend, Alex James, who was actually Jesse's friend at the time. That's why this entire thing holds no fucking weight. Alex James called Jesse when the article dropped and Jesse told Alex her story personally to her friend. I'd never met her. And then after Alex's friend, Jesse, told him about her he still chose to move in with Curtis. He still chose to collab with Curtis. He still actively associated himself as Curtis's friend. And I'm the fucking villain. This is what I mean when I say, stop bringing up my shit, Gabby. Gabby knows why I'm still friends with Alex. She knows everything that's transpired. Now her story holds no weight because Alex is still my friend and he was friends with Curtis. She knows the backstory there because she was friends with both Alex and I for a very long time, including far after Alex was friends with Curtis. But because Gabby continues to need to bring things up to shield herself, to say, but not me, Alex, this continues to put me in a position where now I'm gonna have to sit here and explain why I'm friends with Alex James and not friends with Gabby Hanna, and both have to relate back to who? Curtis Lepore. This is why I don't want you bringing shit up anymore, Gabby. You continue to make me need to address things that you already know the answer to and that still don't make what you did any better. So you know what? Let's just get into it. Number one, she describes Alex as my best friend. I love Alex. He was never my best friend, nor is he my best friend now. Him and I have never had that close of a relationship. We've had a very friendly relationship. I appreciate him as a friend. We have never been best friends. She says that because she wants to paint him in the same light where she was, where one would think I would expect the same things out of him that I expected from her. And that's simply not the truth. She was my best friend. We lived together. She knew my fucking whole life. Alex is someone I met from the internet. I get along with, he's very sweet. And we stay in each other's life and we keep up with each other. How are you? I'm good, how are you? That's it. Alex was friends with Curtis before everything happened. Alex was friends with me before everything happened. He was in a position where he felt he needed to be neutral. And to be completely clear, it's not a situation you stay neutral in. He knows that. Alex never publicly bashed me in the way Gabby did. Gabby very publicly called me a liar, fought with multiple people over it because she was so sure that I was a liar, said that girls cry rape in her neighborhood thousands of times. Alex did none of that. Every interaction Alex has had with Curtis, he has apologized to me for, and he was honest with me about in the time it was happening. Every interaction he had with Curtis Lepore, 
I knew about. Most of them he told me about before they happened, but at a certain time, I just accepted that they were friends. But the real reason why Alex is in my life today is because Alex knows what he did wrong. I don't even know how many times Alex has apologized to me and not just apologized to me. Literally a few weeks ago, he was FaceTiming me and he had tears in his eyes. And he's like, I should have never fucking put you in that position. And I have to tell him, Alex, it's okay. It passed. You grew from it. You learned from it. But that man, he knows what he did wrong and he's owned up to it publicly and he's owned up to it more importantly, privately to me and has shown me that he gives a fuck about me and that he feels horrendous for the position he put me in and how he hurt me. For you to use him as a scapegoat to lessen the heat off of yourself for things that you're still doing is just disgusting. And this is the type of shit I'm talking about when I say, stop talking about this. Stop talking about this if all you're gonna do is deflect and lie and put shit onto other people and then force me to explain it when it, this shouldn't need to be explained. So when Curtis called me, I was being attacked by Jesse relentlessly. Everybody else was saying Curtis was a great guy, including Jesse's friend, Alex. So I heard him out. It was a really fucking confusing situation and really difficult to navigate and I was very isolated because I was Jesse's friend. Gabby was not my only friend. I don't know why she is portraying that nobody was my friend. Was I isolated and a lot of people believed Curtis and stayed friends with Curtis? Yeah, but I was not like a hermit crab that nobody wanted to touch because I was like infected. Like what is this rhetoric that I lived this horrible, miserable life where nobody wanted anything to do with me? That's not the fucking truth either. I had friends at the time, Gabby, and I'm not even talking about like my real life friends, even influencer friends. And I just find it very insane that you are the only one that complains about being isolated. I have a lot of other people that stood by my side and never for a fucking second did they make me feel like that was a burden. And nobody fucked with me because I was Jesse's friend and that was okay with me. I was okay being the person who had Jesse's fucking back. Do you know how many people I've met over the years that have been wonderful to me? Get over yourself. And guess what? In the end, you weren't a good friend at all. You completely opened yourself up to a relationship with someone who hurt me like Curtis hurt me. Don't paint yourself as if you were a good friend. Everything you ever did and said during our friendship is null and void when you did what you did with Curtis Lepore. Stop painting yourself as if you had my back. You know what people who had my back did? avoided him like the fucking plague. Not because I asked them to, just because uh, that's what people do with rapists. After he apologized, he said, can I tell you my story? And I said, yes, I'll listen. Earlier you said that you asked him and again, now you're going back to he asked you. What really happened, Gabby? If Curtis came to me with fucking hard facts that Jesse was lying in some way, I still wouldn't have fucking defended him. He told me that was fine. He would never expect that. He just wanted to be heard. Then I asked him if he was recording because I was paranoid because of some of the shit that Jesse was doing to me. And he told me no. He told me almost the exact same story that Jesse told me. I don't think it's reasonable to assume that consent was implied, especially because they were broken up. You can still rape somebody if you're in a relationship, by the way, but if they were together and that she had previously told him something and there was a misunderstanding, I think that would probably be a different story, but you don't know that your ex wants to have sex with you in the first place. This is where I start to lose any ability to be kind in the things I'm going to say or react in a way that's in any way calm. Not that I've really been calm in this entire video. First of all, you're going off of what he told you, which I'm not gonna get into here because he put out a statement with his sick and twisted fucking version of things. And I put out my statement of how things happened. And so if you wanna find the discrepancy and what she's referencing, when this is not something she should be fucking referencing at all, but for you to say that if he had been my boyfriend at the time, if we hadn't been broken up, then maybe it would be a different story. Are you seriously implying that if he had been my boyfriend, me having a head injury and telling him I feel sick and then waking up with him having sex with me, unprotected sex with me, that that would have been fine. Do you understand how fucking awful you are for saying that? I don't want your input on that night or what you think was okay or would have been okay in certain scenarios. Nobody fucking asked you. Stop talking about this. Stop. I know I was not mean to him on the call. I have always believed that there's no point in trying to learn from your mistakes if people won't let you grow from them. So if you're going to tell me a story and I have an opportunity to possibly fucking teach you something or call you out on some shit, why the fuck wouldn't I do that? Like, what's the point? I knew that his fate would be determined by a judge and a court. I am not here to fucking judge anybody, dude. I'm not here to condemn anybody. All he asked was to be heard and I listened. Curtis was charged and confessed to his crime and I'm pretty sure even pled guilty before I knew Gabby. So again, if you think I'm evil for listening to somebody and for wanting to hear both sides of a situation before I condemned and judged somebody for eternity, whatever. That being said, he did fucking blackmail me. This note is really misleading because yes, she was not friends with me when the TMZ article came out, but when she says, and I was not friends with Jesse when I got the FaceTime call, she means that she was not friends with me anymore. So she's saying it as like, we were never friends during this period. No, no, no. We weren't friends when the TMZ article came out. We had already been best friends 
when you had that FaceTime call with Curtis. So I don't remember exactly the timeline where this is, but shortly after we had that conversation, Jesse was talking about it on Twitter and he hit me up and he was like, hey, do you see what Jesse's saying? Can you go on Twitter and say something? And I was like, no, dude, like I already told you I'm not gonna fucking do that. And he was like, okay, but you know the stories she's been telling about you. You know how manipulative she is. You know how vindictive she is. How can you not defend me? And I said, because I fucking told you I wouldn't. And then when I wouldn't defend him, he said, well, how would you feel if I leaked a video from our phone call where you said that you believed me and Jesse's a liar or something? And I don't have it. But I remember the gist of it was basically he clipped together pieces of the conversation where if I were to say something like, I believe you when you say that you didn't mean to hurt Jesse, but that doesn't mean that she wasn't hurt. He clipped it to be like, I believe you. You believe Curtis when he said he didn't mean to hurt me, Gabby? How does someone do what he did and harass me for fucking years after that and not mean to hurt me? And you're saying that he clipped together your words so that it said, I believe you? Gabby, come on. Someone who got a little carried away and I'm not gonna lie, I was very upset about this when I was presented with this information, but someone who is well-intentioned, just misled in my opinion at that time, and she will own up to that. She's like, I shouldn't have fucking done this. Um, she reached out to Curtis to ask him what the blackmail was. Curtis Lepore is a liar. Gabby Han is a liar, but Curtis Lepore is a fucking liar. So when I was presented and told like, oh, Curtis answered and said what the blackmail was, I told this person, I don't wanna know. I don't wanna see the fucking words he types on a screen. Like, I don't even know how to, to describe how much I fucking hate that man. But after about, I think it was like two weeks, I guess my curiosity got the best of me. And I was like, what was the blackmail? Because I know Gabby's not being honest with me, I know Curtis is not honest. Something in my gut just wanted to know, I guess. And I'm gonna put the messages up on the screen right now. This is between Curtis and the person who was messaging him. And Curtis says that Gabby reached out to him and told him that she was sorry for what I put him through. He asked her to defend him publicly, which she also admits. And she said, no, I don't know who to believe, but I know both of them are fucked up. And I know that regardless of what Gabby thought she was doing in that phone call, what she was really doing is sympathizing with Curtis. That's why she wanted to hear his side. That is why she's still, when she's talking about, oh, there was a discrepancy, she's talking about his story. She sympathizes and believes his story after she was my best friend. What level of fucked up do you have to be to do that? Hide it, blame it on me, and then till this day, call me your abuser. And then after that, I think I only saw him like two or three times. One was at an event in Hollywood. That's where he was like, hey, Gabby Show, can I get a pic? And took those pictures. And then afterwards, the same night, everybody from the event went to the diner across the street. And then he was taking pictures of Zane and I, like implying that he was there with us. Can we rewind to a year ago to what you said that story was? In fact, one time I was at an event, an influencer event, and he happened to be there and he tried to take a Snapchat selfie with me. And I told him to delete it right now because I did not want to be associated with him. I have zero association with Curtis Lepore. I'm so exhausted. So now it wasn't just a picture that you took with someone who you didn't even know was taking the picture. And then as soon as you realized it was Curtis, you asked him to delete it. The story is that you guys all went to dinner afterwards and he sat across from you in a booth and you're mad that he posted about it. You should be mad that you put yourself in that situation. Nobody can make you look bad by showing something that you're doing unless the thing that you're doing is bad. I don't remember if we had any other exchanges. I would have never collabed with Curtis, even if I fucking wanted to. Like how dumb would I have to be to collab with Curtis considering there were already rumors out there that Jesse was telling people that I ditched her to collab with her rapist. Yeah, but- never explicitly said Gabby is a rape apologist. Gabby collab with my rapist. So I, this isn't even really an attack on Jesse Smiles, it's an attack on Wait, what the you... internet is saying and what you're allowing. There's some shit that pops up. Like after I did my first video, the responding to Jesse, and I talked about specific tweets. Those were all the tweets I could possibly find. And then I saw more tweets afterwards and my fucking jaw dropped. Dude, I've been living in constant fear that a lie that I don't even know I'm telling is gonna catch up with me because I don't fucking remember it. Because I do impulsive shit and then I forget about it. I have memory issues, dude. What you're basically saying is that you're so impulsive and you've done so much shit to hurt people over the years that you can't even keep track of it. And quite frankly, that's something you need to get help for. I'm not like shaming your mental health at all. I'm just saying that is a scary situation. And it means that you've treated a lot of people in ways that you can't even keep track of at this point because it's been so many, because you're so impulsive. That's not an excuse. Stop hurting people and you don't have to keep track of anything. I've done some fucking shit to like hurt people's feelings in this situation and others. The thing that's so fucking tough for me is I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And that's how I've been feeling like since 2015, but like specifically the last two years since she started this shit, like 
I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like every fucking day feels like I'm walking in a fucking landmine and like I just don't want to fucking step on anything. You have put yourself in these situations. You have made the decision to have the interactions with Curtis Lepore that you have had. Rather than just sit here and say you lied, you're bringing up our past and talking about that I privated videos. Gabby, we're not here talking even about my 2019 video anymore. This has become so much more than that because of how much you've lied and how much you've put me through when you've lied. You know what it is that I'm pregnant and it's not even like, oh, I'm pregnant, please pity me. Like I'm fucking pregnant, Gabby. I just had a miscarriage in January. I'm halfway done with my pregnancy and I looked at my husband and I'm like, I haven't even enjoyed it. I don't deserve to have to be addressing this topic anymore. I left you alone for a year and you plotted a fucking series to follow through with your blackmail from last summer. I don't want to deal with you anymore. I promise my followers this is my last video to Gabby Hanna. I don't want anything to do with this person anymore. Whatever she says, anything, I don't even give a fuck what she brings up from my past. If there's a tweet I liked or a YouTube video where you feel I was talking about you, girl, go for it. Just go for it. I don't care. I am sorry to my followers, I'm sorry to anyone watching this video, that you're having to be involved in my life in a way that I, quite frankly, never wanted you guys involved in my life. I think this is a bit too far. I want to be happy. I want to enjoy my pregnancy. I don't want to live in fear of a person who would rather blackmail me then own up to how she's lied. I am done with this person. I think she is a danger on this platform, not just to the people that she terrorizes when they're having mental breakdowns, but to her fans and her followers who every day are sent marching in a different direction to defend her because she'd rather create this spectacle of a series and pretend that she's never ever spoken up about anything than just say, I fucked up here, period. If you want to take accountability, just do it. But stop trying to paint yourself as someone who does no wrong and gets called out for nothing and you're just being attacked and you're just being hurt. You hurt people, Gabby. You hurt people constantly. And mark my words, you will continue to hurt people. Once this series is over, six months, a year from now, when your music needs promoting, you are going to attack someone else like Rachel Oates or Oscar Wilde or Dominic DeAngelis. You are going to worry your followers on TikTok by doing dances and saying things that concern them. You are going to do that because that's you. That's nobody else but you. Those are things that you're doing. You feel like your life is just drama and things you have to address, but you refuse to hold up the mirror in front of your face and see how you got there. The part that you played in almost every situation. Is there situations where people are wronged for no reason and that you might have been wronged for no reason? Yeah, but a lot of of them, that's not the case. You've had a huge part to play in almost every situation that you've been called out for. Again, I was bullied off of Vine, the only platform I knew, and I left in silence because that's what I wanted to do and I wanted to do it with dignity. For you to say that this series is you leaving YouTube because you've basically been bullied off of YouTube, but then to bring everyone down with you, do you not think I could have been on Vine every day of my life and say, Curtis Lepore confessed to raping me. You guys that are leaving hate comments, you don't even know because he confessed in a phone call. Gabby, why the fuck would I spend time trying to convince people who think I'm a horrible person over something I know, I know happened? Why would I spend a breath on those people? For what? I left for myself. If you wanna leave YouTube, there's the door. But stop trying to bring everyone into the shit that you caused. I'm not saying that I had no part in our situation. I mean, I've talked about parts I've had in this situation and you know, subtweets and whatever you wanna call it. But like this, what you're doing, this series, what you've already done, how you've already lied, you're just hurting people. Anyway, I've been talking for a very long time and I'm very tired and I really don't have anything else to say. So that is all. And if you made it all the way through, I appreciate it.